Shirelli had a, a vision. She gave it to me a couple weeks ago. It was right when I was uh, working on Jonah. And so I thought, wow, that's cool. Come and share it. Uh, forewarning, I might cry. <laughs> um, because it was very uh, emotional for me. Um, so I was asleep one day, and I had a dream, the most vivid dream I've ever had in my life. Um, it literally felt like I was awake and I was living it. Um, so in my dream, it started off, everything was so dark, and there was a trumpet sound. And I woke up from off of the ground, and I woke up to chaos people in fear, um, sadness, and um, I remember waking up and the first thing I thought of was, oh my God, Jesus came and I'm still here. I was left behind and people were running crazy, trying to figure out what happened. And I just remember thinking, that I couldn't feel the presence of God. And to me, that was the scariest thing ever because having experienced the presence of God and knowing who God is and how great he is and living in a world without him, I just felt like I couldn't take it. Like all I wanted was to cry out to God and I felt like I couldn't because he couldn't hear me because he wasn't there. So. In my dream, everybody was just saying how Jesus came and a lot of us were left behind and all of a sudden, people started appearing out of the nowhere. And these are some people from the church, actually. Um, Brian, unfortunately, was not there with his colorful shirts, but you know. <laughs> but... <laughs> These people started appearing, and they were wearing black shirts. And on their black shirts, like in the center, they had a golden heart. And I remember seeing specifically Mary Crowley. And she said that, she's like, I just feel so honored that God would choose me to come back to Earth to help the lost souls. So all these people from the church started appearing. and. They were here to help all of the lost souls. They were here to show us that God hadn't forgotten about us, that God was still running after us, that God was still desiring us even when we feel like he's not around us, even when we feel like he's given up on us, he's still there to hold us and, and to pull us in. He's there waiting with open arms. So as the dream continued, Everybody was running around trying to find security, and there was such evil in the world. There were people hurting each other. There were people stealing, stealing babies. Like It, it was just crazy. And there were these clocks that were like around, it was like the center, and it seemed like every hour on the hour, it would strike, and there would be some kind of disease, some kind of plague. There would be some kind of disruption that would happen and everybody would just run for security but nobody could find it. And in my dream there was one specific guy that was like running after me trying to hurt me. And I remember my cousin was in my dream and she was with me and I just kept trying to pull her and to run away from all the bad, to run away from all the evil and try to find some kind of security. And he was running after us, and I was running away. And I just kept crying, running away. And he had a knife that he was trying to cut us with, and he started to gather more people to hurt us. And I kept running in fear, and I'm just like running. And I wanted to cry to God to save me, and it felt like I couldn't because his presence wasn't there. And in the running, I stopped, and I turned around, and I just started screaming to them, Jesus loves you. No matter what, Jesus still loves you. Jesus cares for you. Jesus loves you. And as I'm doing the standing, like stop there, they're throwing knives at me. They're throwing things to hurt me. And it just goes 
by my sides. It misses me every time, and I'm just screaming, Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you. And I wake up from my dream, and the first thing I think of is, you got to tell Brian. <laughs> so the next morning, I text Brian, and I say, I need to talk to you, and I explain my dream, and he tells me I need to share it. And in my dream, I just felt like it's never too late. Jesus is always there, and he's there with open arms, and he's there waiting for you to turn around. And it's not just about us. It's about everybody else who's in the world, and Jesus calls us to minister to them, to love them, and that's our job. We need to stop running away from the broken. We need to stop running away from those who are hurt. We need to stop running away from the evil and run towards it with love and proclaim the love of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So this morning, we're starting a new series on Jonah, Running from God. It's four parts. This is the first part. As we get started, I, I, uh, I want to ask you a question. Have, have you ever, I wonder if you have ever considered running away from home? We'll start there. <laughs> Maybe some of us I guess I should ask you, have you ever actually run away from home? Some of us. So I was a sophomore in high school, and it's very important that you know, as I tell this story, that I was a very disrespectful son. My dad and I were not getting along, and I was very disrespectful, very arrogant. That is important to know. Remember, this is 1972. And I am just in his face. I'll never forget. I mean, I don't know what was going on, but I was lipping off and do, you know, like high school kids like to do, and just lipping off, lipping off. I had a bedroom in the basement at the time. And I'm just giving it to him, and my dad's giving it back to me, and I'm just going right back in his face, which was so disrespectful. And uh, so I start going downstairs, and he's coming after me. And what made it worse is my mother is right behind him. I thought, oh, I'm in trouble. I get downstairs, and I'm still lipping off. You would think I would kind of run and hide. No, I'm still giving it to him. Well, my poor dad, now remember, this is 1972. He just was looking for something to smack me with. He couldn't find anything. He was looking around, and, and he finds this. It's a lot less. It's not nearly as bad as it sounds. He finds this plastic golf club. You know, one of those plastic, you could probably, you know, break it over, you know, this, this thing up here, it was just this, this little plastic golf club. And, and so he, he, he was frustrated, I'm lipping, and he's coming, at, and so he's got this golf club, and he's gonna, he's gonna give me something with this golf club, just a little plastic thing, you know, no big deal, don't worry. And then I hear the words I long to hear, my mother, Butch, wait, Butch, wait. Now my dad, his name was Mel, but they called him Butch. Butch, wait, I'm thinking, oh, thank you, Mom. Mom's going to save me. Mother, dearest. Oh, we all need a mother. My dad's got this club, and I hear, Butch, wait, wait. And she comes up to me. At that time, I was wearing wire rim glasses, you know. She comes up to me, and she takes those glasses off, and she goes, okay, beat the crap out of them. To protect innocent ears here this morning, she didn't quite say crap. I ran away from home that night. I ran away two more times in my teens, but I missed my mom and dad, and I didn't stay long. I couldn't run away for long. I wasn't very successful at running away from home, but I, I have to tell you that as a Christian, I've been a Christian 45 years now, uh, I became much more successful at running away from God. Several seasons in my life, I, I ran away from God. I, I did my own thing. One of those seasons was, ironically, after my dad died in uh, 2003. And he died, and death uh, hits people differently. And I don't know what it was. It just, it just knocked me out. You know, I, was, I didn't want to hear anything about the Bible. I didn't want to hear anything about God. I, I just was just checked out. I just ran. It was so bad that I used to lead worship here at this incredible church, but it was so bad that 
uh, John, our pastor, said, Brian, you're in no shape to lead worship. I didn't lead worship for eight months in that season. And then my wife and I were leading a house church, and uh, he said the same thing. He said, you're in no shape to lead a house church, a small group. Uh, you need to come into ours. So Patrice went, and I didn't. I stayed home. My life was a, a mess because I was running from God. Have you ever tried to run from God? You know what I'm talking about. See, he, he's calling you to do something, and you say, I ain't doing that. And so we run from God. We hide from him. We go off in a different direction. I, I, am, I, am I preaching to family here this morning? Jonah, that's why I'm so excited about this message, this series. Jonah was the most famous runner of all. But see, many people have a real problem with the book of Jonah. Because imagine you're sitting uh, for coffee and some guy comes to you. And, and, I, and here's the narrative of Jonah. I'm going to give you the narrative of Jonah in about four sentences. This guy comes to you, you're having coffee. You go, oh, yeah, man, you know, I heard God speak to me. And, you know, I just kind of disagreed. And, and so then I got on this boat and there was this big storm. And, and, and you know, I, I felt, I, I, they threw me overboard. And this, this big whale has me for lunch. And, and then the whale burps. And then I'm on, on dry land. I mean, it, it, that's that's, that's Jonah. If you're listening to that, you're like, really? Uh, there's some people that I called and they're waiting for you. They have a nice little truck and they have a little white coat for you and, and you're going to go away for a while. It'll be okay, you know? It, it doesn't make any sense, does it? But you know what? I believe every word of that story. I believe that it happened just like it was written. Do you know that Jesus believed the same thing? Matthew 12. One day, some teachers of religious law and Pharisees came to Jesus and said, Teacher, we want to show you, uh, uh, we want you to show us a miraculous sign to prove your authority. And here we go. But Jesus replied, Only an evil, adulterous generation would demand a miraculous sign. This is Jesus, folks. The only sign I will give them is the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was in the belly of the great fish for three days and three nights, so will the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. Jesus believed. If Jesus believes, I believe. We just witnessed, here's another reason. We just witnessed the dedication of the babies. Hey, friends, let me break some news to you. Not just these babies, but every single person in this room. You were safe in your mother's womb for nine months. If he can keep us safe for nine months, we have a big enough God that can keep some dude safe in a belly of a whale for three days, can't we? Yeah, you got to believe this story. And so I want to say this to you as I begin. This is important for you to catch. Because I'll say it every time I'm up here about Jonah. You can run from God, but you can't outrun God. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Jonah. I, I don't do this often, but I am going to take the time to read the story. The Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amite. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. Jonah got up, went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa. That's important. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. He found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He brought a ticket. He went on board, he, hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. But the Lord hurled a powerful wind over the sea, causing a violent storm that threatened to break the ship apart, fearing for their lives the Desperate sailors shouted to their god, small g, for help, threw the cargo overboard to lighten the ship. But all the time, Jonah was sound asleep down in the hole. That's for part two. We're going to talk about Jonah sleeping in the, uh, the ship. Get up and pray to your god. Maybe he will pay attention to us and spare our lives. And the crew cast lots to see which of them had offended the gods and caused the terrible storm. And when they did this, the, the, the lots identified Jonah as the culprit. Love that word. Why has this awful storm come down on us? They demanded. Who are you? What is your 
time, line of work. What country are you from? What is your nationality? Jonah answered, I'm a Hebrew. <clears throat> I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. The sailors were terrified when they heard this. He had already told them he was running away from the Lord. Oh, why did you do it? They groaned. And since the storm was getting worse all the time, they asked him, why should we do to you? What should we do to you to stop this storm? Throw me into the sea. Verse 15, then the sailors picked Jonah up and threw him into the raging sea and the storm stopped at once. The sailors were awestruck by the Lord's great power and they offered him a sacrifice and vowed to serve him. Now the Lord had arranged for a great fish to swallow Jonah and Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. I'm gonna give you three things that happen and we'll move quickly through this. Three things that happen when you make a decision when you make a decision to run from God, there's three things that are going to happen. The first thing that happens when you decide to run from God is we run to unsafe places. I wish you could say that when you run from God, you go to, you know, some great place and you're going to be okay. No, no, we, we run to unsafe places. Jonah is standing by the sea at the port of Joppa, God is calling Jonah to go 550 miles north to Nineveh. Nineveh is a city that had over a million people, but the, the Jews hated Nineveh. They didn't get along because the Ninevites were vicious, violent people. And Jonah heard all about Nineveh as a little boy, a little Hebrew boy growing up. It doesn't surprise me that he said to God, are you kidding me? I ain't going to Nineveh. No surprise there. See, here's the deal, though. See, Jonah sees Nineveh one way, but God sees Nineveh a different way. And Jonah did what you and I do a lot of times when we don't see things the way God sees things. Jonah runs in the opposite direction. Can I get an amen there? We understand that, right? He runs. He does his best Imitation of Forrest Gump, he runs. He runs 2,000 miles in the opposite direction of where God called him to go. See, Jonah's saying, it's not that mysterious. It's not that mystical. Jonah's simply saying to God, God, I believe in you. God, I, I understand, but I'm just not going to do what you're asking me to do. That's all that's going on here. It's not that big of a, of, a, of a mystery. But see, we're the same as Jonah. We say, God, I believe in you, but what you're asking me to do might mess with my life. God, I believe in you, but what you're asking me to do, it might mess with my finances. See, I want to make a lot of money. There's nothing wrong with that. We know that the love of money, we talked about that in greed. But I want to make a lot of money, and I want to keep all my money. So, so what you're asking me to do, it might mess with my career. It might mess with the friends I keep. It might mess with the girl or the guy I want to marry. See, I believe in you. I'm even reading your word, but I don't want to do what you want me to do, so I'm going to run in the opposite direction. That's what we do, don't we? How many of you know that when we are running from God, often we look back on the decisions that we made and we say to ourselves, what was I thinking? Life's biggest regrets in our lives are a result of a season that we ran from God. You know what I'm talking about. We run to unsafe places. The second thing that happens when we run from God is our life gradually falls apart. <laughs> Notice I said gradually. It doesn't happen all the time. It doesn't happen overnight. For a while, we're like, oh, that's great. You know, and, and by the way, three things happen when our life falls apart. This is three things that happen. W one thing that happens is we stop hearing God's voice. Paul, put up, I, I think I got Jonah 1-1 one, one up there. Yeah, the Lord gave this message to Jonah. He was listening. Now, we go to verse 3. 
Jonah 1, 3. Did I, did I give you that? Yeah, there we go. But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. See, he's listening at first, and he's running from God, and all of a sudden his life is gradually falling apart. He's not listening anymore. He's not listening. Oh, he took two verses. And then what happens is God decides to get our attention when we're running from him. Our life is falling apart, and then he decides to get our attention. See, sometimes we harden our hearts so much to the words of God that we run from him. It's happened to me. It's happened to you. Don't you hate it when he tries to get your attention? <laughs> I hate it when he does that. I was in this really weird, funky uh, season in 1993, and uh, I'll spare you all the details, but something, I don't remember, something was going on. I kind of remember, but it was just kind of a weird thing. And, and so I decided to run out of a uh, sales call I was doing, and, and I decided to run into a pole where I broke my leg in six places. And I had 28 screws and two wires and uh, uh, two plates to put that thing back together. Well, he got my attention. I was on my back and I had a cast. It was a very unpleasant experience. He got my attention. You know, it took me a few years to sleep that one off and, and he needed to get my attention again. And in 1999, you all know this story, so I'll just mention it in a sentence. I had a major nervous breakdown, you know, fetal position, the whole thing. Oh, did he get my attention then. See, he will do whatever it takes to get your attention when you're running to bring you back to him. He'll do whatever it takes. Here's another thing that happens when our life starts falling apart. This is a big one. We start to confuse opportunity with God's blessing. Oh, that, you got to think that one through. In other words, favorable circumstances do not always equal God's will. Oh, I'm doing well. I'm running and things are going good. Uh, uh, but, 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 but that doesn't necessarily mean, necessarily mean God's blessing you. Let me say it another way to you. There will always be a ship in the harbor waiting to take you in the wrong direction. <laughs> So Jonah, Jonah's in at Joppa, the port of Joppa. We read about it, right? He's got one ship that can take him to Nineveh, where he's supposed to go. And then there's this other boat going on a long journey. And then he reaches into his pocket, and he has the money for the ship, for the boat. And you know, you know Jonah, praise the Lord. God provided he provided the money for me to go. Must be God. I, he, probably, he probably sang a hymn and spoke in tongues and, and just blessed God. Bless God. I'm going the other. God provided. I, I wrote this down. I want to get it right. You and I can actually be running from God and still have things at least for a season appear to be okay, but after a while, because we are running from God, our lives will eventually and gradually fall apart, I guarantee you. Think about those sailors. See, the third thing that happens is when we're running from God and our life is falling apart, what happens, and this is the tough one, we hurt those around us. Think about those sailors. All they did was invite a guy on their ship who was running from God. What happens, all of a sudden, they're in this big storm, and they start throwing the cargo over. Remember we read about that? Do you know what that cargo was? That was their living. That was their livelihood. They were on a ship to sell that stuff. They got no more cargo, thanks to Jonah. It hurt them. I don't know. I would imagine some of them lost their jobs or whatever. I don't know, but they were throwing overboard what was their livelihood? They were hurt, affected, because Jonah was running from God. It happens to all of us. We hurt those around us. They're not going to be spared if you're here this morning and you're running from God. So let me give you the third thing that happens. And, and I just, I, I, I just want to say that I, I've talked about some bad news here, you know. Uh, the first thing is we run to unsafe places when we're, when we're running from God. That's bad news. The second thing is we, 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 uh, 
our lives begin to fall apart. That's bad news, right? That's like, you know, cable news, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, bad news, bad news, bad news. That's why I don't watch the news. Uh, but anyway, so, so it's bad news. But here, I'm going to leave you with good news. You, you want some good news here this morning? See, I, I want to close this first session, this first message on Jonah with good news. Here's the good news. The third thing that happens when we run from God, when you and I start running away from God, God does not sit up there in heaven with his arms folded saying, have a good run. I guess I won't be seeing you for a while. No. You know what God does? He gets involved in your life. And he does whatever he needs to do not to pay you back, but to bring you back to him. Is that good news? Yeah, that's good news. And it's true. God gets involved in our lives because he wants to bring you back. I, I don't know what you've heard. God's some angry guy throwing lightning bolts. God's this guy, that guy. I don't know what you've heard in churches that you've been in before. All I know is we have a God who loves us and wants to bring us back. He doesn't want to condemn us. He doesn't want to judge us. He doesn't want anybody to go to hell. He will chase you down to your last breath. It's good news. Maybe you're in a stormy season this morning. I don't know. Maybe you're here this morning. You're angry at God. I, I don't know all your stories. But, but here's what I want to leave you with this morning in this first message. I'm going to say something, and I'm going to say it a lot deeper. I want to leave you with this message. If you're running from God this morning, God loves you. He loves you. Now, oh, we know that. But let me say it to you deeper. Let me, let me say it to you a deeper way. He loves you so much that he wants to get involved in your life and he will do anything he has to do not to judge you, not to condemn you, not to pay you back, but to bring you back to him. That's how much he loves you. Here's something else about God, and I'm almost done here, but see, when you run from him, he doesn't chase you. You're not going to see God in the rear view mirror, you know, huffing and puffing, hey, slow down, slow down. You know, you're not going to see God chasing after you. You know why? You know why? God, God, God's got a much better plan in mind. See, God goes ahead of you and waits for you. you I love it. See, he doesn't chase you. He goes ahead of you. He knows where you're going to go, and he just waits for you to come so he can restore you. That's the God that we serve. That's the father that we serve, right? <clears throat> Some of you have been running. Come on up, uh, Danny. Some of you have been running from God for weeks. Maybe, maybe some here this morning just started your journey running from God. Maybe... There's some here this morning that have been running from God for months. I would guess there's some of you, some of us, running from God for years. I'm going to say that some here this morning have been running from God for decades. There are some here this morning, and I'm not all that prophetic, so I'm not calling out names here, but you know who you are. I'm telling you, there's a couple here that you had the call of God on your life as a young man or a young lady, and you've been running from him all your life. But here's what's so cool about this morning. What a great morning it's been already. What, what, a, what a great morning, but 
Here's, here, here's, here's what's so amazing about this morning. Ready? See, God knew if you're running, God knew you would be here today. God knew that I would be here today. God knew that I'd be talking about Jonah today. And you, he knew that you would be here, so he just came here and waited for you. And you're stuck now because you and him have collided. He's here. He knew you'd be here. And he wants to do something in your life. So what's that one thing in your life, that one area in your life that you're running from God in? Come on, you know what it is. It's not that magical. We know. What is it? What is it? What's that one thing in your life that you're resisting his voice in? He's calling you. Well, I don't know. Is that the voice of God? Oh, come on. You know. You know he's calling. What's that one thing that you're resisting that voice? What's, what's the one thing this morning, that one area in your life that you're hiding from God in? Well, maybe today, Sunday, August 14, 2022. Maybe today is the day that you stop running. Maybe today is the day that you start listening again. Maybe today is the day you take that first step back. Maybe. Father, thank you for this day. What a glorious day it has been. We have been in your presence. We have been in, in, in the heavenlies with worship. We have witnessed new souls being dedicated to you, future soldiers for you. And now, Lord, we've, we've heard a message about the fact that no matter how far we run, no matter how much we sin, no matter who we sin with, no matter how many mistakes we make, We've heard a message today. I, I thank you for that message to me and to everybody else here that, that it's okay, you run, at, you, you run ahead of us and you restore us. You, you do whatever you can to bring us back to you. What a great way to end this incredible day. I pray for souls here this morning that are running. I pray for the runners here this morning. Lord, turn them around. Speak to their hearts this morning. And all it takes is one step. I pray that some would take that step this morning. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.